Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Tuesday to you. Today is Tuesday, October the 26th. It is 10 a.m. We're located here at 901 Main Street in the heart of Old Town Conyers for our board meeting this morning. And this is our official October pink out day. Uh, see so many uh, faces and staff with pink on, but uh, Commissioner, I, I just can't go too deep into this agenda without recognizing the pink star of the, the show. The star, right. And, and that would be it's always one. Director Dan Morgan. <laughs> He's our Director of Emergency Management, and uh, uh, as soon as I came through the door, I laid eyes on I thought it was a pink pooch from the pink pooch parade, <laughs> but it, it, he's not a pooch at all. <laughs> you know, next uh, year, you know, between, you know, he and Chief McDaniel have this one-up rivalry, right. so I can't wait <laughs> right. to see what, what's going to happen next, <laughs> was, next year. <laughs> that blonde hat turns the pink hat next year. It's probably be something much more um, <laughs> creative. <laughs> well, well. Breast cancer is a big deal, right. and we know that, and that's one of the reasons that we highlight um, breast cancer awareness. As all of us know, the month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We've had, we've had, and we have certain members of our uh, organization, our staff, our leadership team, our workforce, who are survivors and some who are currently battling breast cancer as we speak. So we certainly do keep all of them in prayer and not to mention the countless numbers of our residents and citizens here in Rockdale County who have been or are being impacted by um, breast cancer um, even as we speak. So it's a big deal. Um, it's not a, a challenge or a struggle, should I say, that one individual commissioner deals with by themselves, but it impacts the entire family, Absolutely. what happens in the workplace. Um, so I, we wanted to make sure that we highlight it. Uh, and also want to make mention to the sheriff's office and what they do every year this month their uh, patches on the side of their uniform is dedicated to recognize breast cancer awareness. They have the pink patch, mm -hmm. and I think that's another uh, a great opportunity to show um, our uh, support right. for Speaking breast cancer awareness. The survivors, the sheriff's wife was a survivor, so I think that that's one of the reasons why it's so near and dear to his heart. Absolutely. And he does everything that he can to support breast cancer and breast cancer awareness. I'm so glad you pointed that out. You're absolutely right. With Sheriff Leather's wife being a, um, a survivor, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, as we call this meeting to order, we want to start this morning with invocation from none other than our good friend, Pastor uh, Chris Schertz from uh, Conyers First United Methodist Church, the church two doors down. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Pastor. Pastor. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with everybody, and uh, yeah, glad that I could just walk down the road. So, <laughs> uh, at this time, if you'll join me, let's uh, remember and lift up our prayer. God, you're the one who has uh, created the whole universe, mm -hmm. and for that, we give thanks. You have made this beautiful world this wonderful community, and for that we give you thanks. And Lord, as we seek you today, we just pray the blessing of your presence and wisdom and strength for this moment. God, we pray for wisdom of our minds, for eyes to see um, clearly the insight that needs to occur. Uh, Lord, for creativity, in uh, trying to solve problems. Lord, for uh, uh, collegiality and building of this community in ways that it will continue to strengthen us as a team of citizens for your glory. Lord, we just pray for your presence and power to be at work in these, your servant leaders. And uh, Father, as has just been mentioned, we also remember today those that are struggling with cancer. 
especially breast cancer. Those that have conquered it by your healing grace, those that are still in the midst of their battles, Lord, we just uh, intercede for them this day and this month. And Lord, we give thanks for all these things. And uh, we just trust your blessing to be with us. And so we pray that you'd be active in our community in these ways. And for those of us gathered here who follow you, Lord Jesus, we also pray that the honor and authority of your name will strengthen our prayers. Amen. 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 Let us stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Schertz, uh, for that warm invocation this morning. I'm not going to prolong uh, our, our agenda this morning. We're going to jump right on into the uh, special recognitions and presentations. And we will start with um, one of Rockdale's finest, uh, who also is the lead uh, top executive for ATL, uh, Transit, and Link Authority. And that's none other than Mr. Chris Thomason, the executive director of the Atlanta Regional Transit Link Authority. Come on up, Mr. Thomason. Thank you so much. And a proud Rockdale resident. Yes, yes. Yes. So uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to come uh, address the uh, commission. Um, you saved me a, a long drive in, into town, so I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, this morning, I actually want to take some time to talk to you a little bit about uh, what's happening um, in the greater metro Atlanta area, what my three agencies are, are doing. And even though a lot of the projects I'm talking about aren't right here in our backyard, I think it's a precursor for some of the things and opportunities that will come out uh, this way. And um, also I'll touch on some of the work that we're getting ready to embark on together uh, with the county. So if we'll go to the uh, next slide. So. <clears throat> Metro Atlanta is home to nine transit agencies that collectively were responsible for over 100 million trips in fiscal year 2020. In 2020, the ATL became the home of the state's express regional commuter operation. Uh, so it's moved from Greta to Serta, but now it's with uh, the ATL. And that express service provided over 1.4 million trips in FY 2020. And many of those trips actually occurred on the Georgia Express lanes. You can see on the video on the Northwest Corridor, which is the express lanes out in the Cobb area, um, express routes experienced a 12% improvement in our on-time performance due to the speed and reliability advantages presented by those lanes. Um, also, in terms of our toll operation, or Peach Pass, as you saw in the video, over 1 million vehicles now in the state of Georgia have a Peach Pass. They account for over 20 million express lane trips, across the four different express lane facilities that we have in operations. The I-85 express lanes, which is the oldest of those and uh, just recently celebrated its 10 year history, um, accounts for the majority of our trips at 8.4 million trips, but the Northwest Corridor is close behind with over 6.7 million trips. Uh, to put this in perspective, it took I-85 hot lanes three years to reach the same number of trips as the Northwest Corridor. Mm. But as impressive as some of these numbers are, uh, certainly, Pardon the pun, uh, COVID took a toll on our express lanes and our revenues. We're not pardoning that. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to tip pay the toll. Yeah. So next slide. So let's talk a little bit about uh, COVID's impact uh, on what we're seeing in the region. Um, you know, we started FY20 with approximately 2 million trips per month. And we're on pace to hit approximately 25 million trips per year. Um, Next slide. <clears throat> so yeah, we were at uh, 2 million, and click it again so the graph starts, thanks. Started 2 million trips per month on pace for 25 million trips for the year. And we start to see a huge decline in March of 2020. By mid-March, uh, trips had declined by approximately 15% from pre-COVID levels. 
And as the public followed social distancing and shelter in place orders, a steady and steep decline uh, continued. And we were down over 82% of traffic last year. Um, mm. And that we hit the sort of the bottom of that trough of uh, April of last year. At the end of fiscal year 20, which for us ended in June of 2020, uh, actual total revenues were about $30 million, which as high as that number is, was 29% below our original forecast. However, since uh, April of 2020, we've seen a steady in, uh, increase in trips since then. And during the first half of this fiscal year, um, excuse me, last fiscal year, uh, toll trips and revenues just continued to climb steadily. And now we're more or less back to uh, normal, which is interesting because the, the workplace and, and commute patterns haven't returned to normal. I'm gonna talk a little bit about why that is. I mean, there's certainly people out there driving. Um, uh, I'll go ahead and give the teaser, but it's, it has a lot to do with the uh, fundamental shift in like commercial vehicles and freight traffic. Mm. Um, but go to the next slide, you know, because we learned some important lessons during this time. Um, you know, you don't have to be the head of the ATL to know that um, COVID had a significant impact on transit. So we talked about the toll side. Martyr Rail was down 60, 70 percent uh, during the pandemic, but local bus ridership actually stayed at about 50 to 55 percent. And it didn't matter if you're talking about Marta or Cobb Service or Gwinnett. So again, keep that in mind as we continue to work with the county and we start looking at potential uh, transit needs. Because what this really underscores is that even though transit was down overall, it was still a lifeline for many of those who are dependent mm -hmm. on transit. Mm -hmm. um, and those are for workers in frontline sectors such as food service, retail, hospitality, uh, first responders even. Um, we had uh, documented cases of healthcare workers um, uh, up in the uh, northern part of Metro Atlanta who were relying on transit. It's not that they didn't have cars, it's not that they didn't have choices. They were literally so exhausted from the 24-7 uh, processing of things, they didn't really want to be driving and they were thinking about their safety and, and, and others. So if you go to the next slide, um, I want you to keep that in mind because everyone tends to focus on transit dependent and a lot of times we start focusing on like we're doing somebody a favor by having transit. Um, know that many of us in this room are dependent on transit. Um, these workers that, these are the workers that conducted the, your lab tests, stocked the, your groceries, provide services that we've relied on to really make it through the last two years. Um, so this is something that we really need to look at um, because uh, transit is not only a lifeline uh, service, but it's really helping keep our economy moving. All right, next slide. So, we talked about that, but there was another shift, and that was traffic patterns. COVID didn't bring this about. It may have accelerated some of this, um, but what you see, and if you'll hit back on the slide for a second, you know these Amazon vans? Mm -hmm. I think I was out here like two or three years ago, and I was talking about how all these electric scooters were popping up seemingly overnight. Two years ago, you never saw these vans. Does anybody even go a day without seeing them now? <laughs> right, they're everywhere. Yeah, uh, so this has fundamentally changed, and you can see it if you travel on the I-20 corridor between here and Atlanta. It used to be we had directional traffic. Now you know, you have no idea if you're gonna be able to get into town or back. You can see bumper to bumper traffic at two o'clock in the afternoon. Yes. Uh, my associate and I were talking about it. She came in from the city out here, no problem, but the other side was totally backed up. It's because of the increase in, in uh, commercial vehicle traffic, and it's something that uh, GDOT and others are trying to study because our traffic patterns have been fundamentally changed going forward. All right, so next slide. One more. So now let's start talking about the future of the region. This is the backdrop of everything that's uh, been happening. The question is, what are the lessons learned that we can apply moving forward? Next slide. So here's what we know. To start dealing with our issues of urban congestion in this whole metro Atlanta area, um, no one solution is going to fix it. It's going to take a combination of transit. It's going to take a combination of ride shares. It's going to take coordination with um, um, freight and commercial traffic and even our express lanes. Next slide. 
We're going to start experimenting with new technologies such as um, BRT or bus rapid transit. Um, this is basically uh, like a train on wheels. Uh, you're going to get speed and reliability that, that can also share the lanes uh, on these express lanes. By the way, there are no plans to do a toll lane out here now, but there are plans to do new express lanes uh, on 20 heading out on, uh, excuse me, from 285 heading out on 20 uh, towards Stonecrest. Uh, so part of that in the future will also include uh, express lanes, and we may be able to do some transit options on it. Next slide. And if you have a Peach Pass, if you don't have a Peach Pass, what are you waiting for? I know we don't really have that many lanes on this side, but we're expanding the use of it. Right now we partner with Hartsfield Jackson and their new ATL West parking deck. You can, if you have a Peach Pass in your car, you literally can drive in, you don't pull a ticket, you take your trip, you come back, you just drive out, automatically bills. You're already running late, you don't have to pull out that credit card, um, you don't have to look for the ticket when you get back, uh, et cetera. We are also um, uh, in partnership with Easy Pass. That's the uh, toll system that's predominant in the Northeast. And by next year, your Peach Pass will work in 17 states in the Northeast and even in Canada. If you want to do a drive from Georgia to Canada, I, I sort of question what you're doing. But if you, <laughs> if you do, the Peach Pass will work. Um, today, as I'm speaking, your Peach Pass will work on any toll road in North Carolina and Florida. Uh, but next slide. <clears throat> We're receiving calls because of that one million people who have uh, vehicles that have peach passes. Gas stations, um, car washes are saying, hey, can we somehow tap in so people can just drive through and go ahead and automatically bill if they so choose? So we're exploring some of those wow. uh, partnerships. Wow, that's huge. Yeah. I'm going to speed up a little because I want to get to the Rockdale. So next slide. Uh, next slide. I've already talked on the importance of traffic. Um, some people sometimes ask, well, hey, how do you do the tolls and, and the transit, and isn't that pulling away from the tolls? We have so many drivers. We have so much traffic. There's room for everything. People can remotely work, et cetera. That last uh, uh, part of the slide, all we needed was 85% of the traffic to come back to have congestion. We, people forget how bad it was <laughs> before COVID. So there's plenty of, of room for all these technologies. Move forward. Uh, next slide. One of the good news for where Rockdale is, is that um, you have the ability to sort of uh, learn from other people's mistakes or experiments. But one of the things we're doing, there's going to be more advanced technology, transit signal priority. We're working with certain counties now where, uh, and, and DOT, they're putting technology into the traffic signal. So as the uh, transit bus comes up, the light will either hold the green or turn the green faster. That's good. Buses only run so often. But once these signals are upgraded, you can add the same technology into your uh, police cars, fire engines, to again, give them the lights and ambulances. So multiple uses for this. Uh, next slide. And we're experimenting with new technology for um, uh, in mobile apps uh, for planning trips across the region. Well, let's get to the last slide. So this is everything we've been doing. Uh, yeah, right here. Uh, this is everything we've been doing to date, but we're very excited about our partnership with the county. Um, we're looking forward to working with the county as you embark on your uh, first major um, transit master plan. Mm -hmm. um, we have done uh, similar work in partnerships with Henry County and Forsyth County, so we'll be bringing those lessons learned uh, into this effort. Um, as a resident of Rockdale, I think there's a lot of opportunities to explore ultimately what's best and, and what do the citizens want. We've, we've really developed a, a grassroots or from the ground up approach. Uh, you really don't want any of these transportation professionals, not me and others, telling you what we think is best. Uh, uh, these plans work best uh, when we seek out opportunities to get that feedback from folks. And so we're very interested in doing that. And the last thing I'll mention is Rockville's been a longtime partner. We have two express park and ride lots. Um, and we've seen the ridership bounce back first 
in uh, Rockdale County. Good. Uh, so we're averaging 246 passengers per day, uh, which is nearly double where we were in January. So uh, we appreciate um, both the business and being service to the county, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Commissioner? Uh, I need to think about my question, so I'll call you personally. Oh, yeah, please do. Uh, well, Chris, I, I want to just say thank you to you and your colleague for coming out. Um, it's always, uh, first of all, we have a little bit of bragging here in Rockdale County that the head of ATL is a resident of Rockdale. You know firsthand being a resident of Rockdale, well, all of the challenges that we have in our community. Um, but it has been uh, a pleasure working with members of your staff uh, regarding the uh, transit and mobility plan that we're looking at in Rockdale County. And as you stated, having that first time master plan for transit is a huge thing. Myself and both of the commissioners share um, the high interest in having a intra uh, transit uh, mobility for our residents getting from the north side to the south side and vice versa into some of the most central areas throughout uh, Old Town Conyers and our shopping district. So we're moving uh, and working with your team uh, to move in that direction and, uh, and it has been a plus. In fact, I think they're scheduled to come back to us with an overview presentation for the board as to where there are in terms of the timeline. I think that's going to happen in November uh, next month. They're coming back that out right. to give a public presentation and, and somewhat of an update. But this is really good and it's, uh, it's really good to hear. And I really appreciate you focusing on the uh, ATL and Rockdale partnership because that's really key and critical for our local residents when we talk about commerce and economic development and just simple ridership and mobility of getting people from one place to the other. What's also exciting to hear what you may mention about the um, potential HOV lanes that are coming down to Stonecrest, because those of us, as you stated, who travel westbound at any given day, at any given time, uh, you know, once upon a time, there was a time that you can predict when the traffic was going to be heavy. Not anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Almost at any time oh, you leave okay. here, it's, yeah. it's, there's, it's a big challenge. So it forces us, us to leave almost two hours early just to get to a meeting in downtown Atlanta for various reasons, or whether we go into a, a show at the Fox Theater or, or something, uh, yeah. arts, entertainment, or what have you. But thank you for coming, uh, and thank you for this update. But more importantly, thank you all for the partnership uh, that um, you have with Rockdale County and the you know our residents are constantly wanting to know uh, from a traffic I don't think there's probably too many hotter conversations than transportation and traffic in Metro Atlanta and that definitely includes <laughs> Rockdale yeah. County so this is really good um, feel free to drop by stop by anytime okay. and um, give us uh, any information Commissioner I do have one question are there any plans to have sort of like a short shuttle from the Stonecrest area to one of the the um, the train stations, the MARTA train stations? Uh, yes and no. There there are no concrete plans, but overall, what we have been doing some internal looks at um, what if we were to establish a new type of service that ran from the park and rides and just into um, the nearest rail station hmm. um, we, we've been looking a little bit at Indian Trail but that sometimes takes people out of the way so um, what would be on, more on the I-20 line with the thought being we could increase the number of trips and therefore because right now our service is 30 minutes some are to an hour that means you got to look at a schedule as opposed to something that was every 10 minutes you just show up hmm. so we're, we're looking at it um, uh, internally right now but I also would like to, for people to look at the needs of seniors and those of us that are getting a little bit um, more towards senior status. Uh, that I resemble that comment, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that um, would like something that could take us into the city on the weekends or yeah. maybe something a little bit that comes in and goes a little bit later so that we can take advantage of some of the things that are happening in the city on the weekends and on the uh, and, and in the evenings so so to that point um, and I don't want to get ahead of the actual um, study work and pre you know predetermines destiny but based on the work that we similar work that we've done with um, uh, 
Forsyth County and Henry County, the concept of flex transit. So it's like a shuttle bus, but then you use an app like Uber to schedule it. Oh, wow. And it's, or on-demand uh, transit okay. is uh, like something that has come up in both of those studies <laughs> in Forsyth County. So, See, you should come work at the ATL. Oh, um, don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I, I should have. by the time I'm finished. I should have mentioned also, GDOT will be um, moving forward uh, sometime next year, but early next year, with a bid package to redo the um, I-20 285 interchange. So we're talking again all the way in the city, but. Um, fixing that huge corkscrew mm -hmm. that goes south mm -hmm. and having traffic select much uh, earlier on, whether you're going straight through or you're going 285 north or 285 south, which will help smooth out all that traffic at um, around the Panola Road area. Yes. And of course, and I used to work at GDOT and I have not been able to accelerate the project of um, exit 82, that, that the interchange right here, um, I can't wait for that project to happen. So. Yeah, that's uh, one of our greatest prayers in Rockdale County, but we've got one just a little bit greater than that, and that is that we get our um, non-access bridge uh, built before uh, they do the work at 138 in the, the most congested con uh, okay. intersection in Rockdale County. We don't know whether that's going to what's going to come first. We've made a lot of traction and, and strides toward the non-access bridge becoming a reality. Uh, however, we don't know whether everything is going to line up before GDOT does their project. We're praying that we can move forward because if GDOT does their project as congested as it is right now, it's going to be even more congested when they start construction there at 138 Dogwood yeah. and, and Old Salem. So well, I'm not GDOT, but I <laughs> spent a lot of time with them. I'm very familiar with uh, the work around Courtesy Road, and um, I have no problem bothering Commissioner McMurray every time I see him. So if there's any little hints you need me to drop in his ear at any time, let me know. Well, we believe your influence <laughs> does matter uh, as the leader of ATL and a resident of Rockton County. You know firsthand. Chris, can't thank you enough. Can't thank both of you all enough for coming out. Um, this morning. Commissioner, any last thoughts no, for thank Mr. You. Thomason? Thank you for coming. My pleasure. All right. Thank See you, you soon. See you soon. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Um, we're going to move forward at this point. Um, Commissioner, we have the approval of the agenda. I move to approve the agenda as presented. It has been properly motioned and second. Are there any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval of the minutes from October 12, 2021, as well as October 19, 2021. I move to approve the minutes as presented. It's been properly motioned and second. Are there any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Motion carries. No unfinished business today, is that correct? That's correct. And we're moving right on to the consent agenda. Commissioner, what's I'm, your pleasure? I move to approve the items on the consent agenda as listed below. It's been properly motioned and second. Are there any questions concerning the items on the consent agenda? You didn't second it. I second it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank Commissioner you. Williams. Thank you. It has now been properly motioned can, uh, and properly seconded. We just missed Commissioner Williams this morning. Right. <laughs> That's what it is. Yes, Mr. I Chairman. I feel the presence over here. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank uh, you. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we're now down to the regular agenda. Yes, that was very quick. So item 561 is future land use case number 2021-04, an ordinance to amend the future land use category for zero Salem Road Southeast from mixed use employment center to medium density residential to repeal conflicting ordinances and for other purposes. This is submitted for a second reading this morning. I move to approve the second reading and to adopt this ordinance as presented. I second that motion. It has been properly motioned and second. Are there any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 562 is rezoning case 2021-06, an ordinance to rezone zero Salem Road Southeast from the NC MXD CID to the MRU to impose conditions upon the property to repeal conflicting ordinances and for other purposes. This is submitted for a second reading. 
I move to approve the second reading and to adopt the ordinance as presented. Uh, I, I won't call for the question and ask that Director Johnson would come up and just bring a point of clarity as to which one this one is, is, is actually <clears throat> going to impact. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. Thank you, Director. Yes, sir. Um, this is actually in reference to 561. They actually, uh, this is the Salem Fairview Road where they're actually trying to rezone as well as get a future land use amendment um, to do a mixed density of both townhomes as well as single family homes. Uh, this has kind of been going back and forth uh, to, to the PC as well as the staff and a lot of iterations, but they kind of got it cleaned up. They have had a lot of coordination with GDOT. As you know, Salem Road, State Route 162, there was a, a forthcoming GDOT widening project. And yes. so they're trying to make sure this will be um, timed, if you will, to coordinate with that. And so, um, but yeah, they've had a lot of coordination with the staff. And so uh, this is that particular project, again, at the corner of Fairview Road as well as Salem. Thank you so much, okay. Director. Thank you. Sure. It's been properly. So you have a motion. We need yeah. a second. Second. I second the motion. Thanks. Thank you, Director. <laughs> it's been properly motioned and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 567, please. Thank you. This is with Blue Alley Technology Solutions, LLC. This is for Technology Services Department, for the Zerto Enterprise Cloud mm -hmm. Edition, for the Data Protection Disaster Recovery, in the amount of $170,355.50, and it's for five years. I move to approve the contract as presented. I second that motion. It has been properly motioned and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I will make a quick point that our technology services department participated in the uh, uh, Fulton County um, cybersecurity information hosted by Chairman uh, Rob Pitts down in Fulton County just a few days ago. And we were well represented. Uh, in fact, I heard from other folks outside of the county uh, that the knowledge base of our team uh, was very strong and uh, we had a very uh, strong presence down there. So hats off to Director Moore Jackson and her staff for representing Rockdale County. Uh, there is a major uptick in the conversations commissioners centered around cybersecurity. As you know, we've been hacked twice, uh, ransomware, hit, we've been hit here in Rockdale County and, and across, of course, uh, several other counties across the region has also been impacted um, by uh, hackers or ransomware so far so good we've not offered up any funds in that area um, but we're staying on top of beefing up what we need to do in the area it, it, it's not never an issue of if we're going to get attacked again but when mm -hmm. and how many safeguards that we have in place to protect our documents, information, as well as our citizens' uh, uh, information that uh, we have through our, our um, systems here in Rockdale County. So a lot more is going to be talked about as relate to cybersecurity and making sure that we have the right skill set, but also, Commissioner, the right talent in place um, to lead us in the right direction to protect Rockdale County. You know, with us being such a small county, Oftentimes, uh, we, we're easy to get looked over if we don't have representation in the right place. So I'm really appreciative of technology services for being there on our behalf. And in that vein, um, a couple of things. Number one, um, I've been approached by other commissioners who wanted to get in touch with our technology services department because they are um, establishing a reputation for excellence. So I just wanted to point that out. Several mm -hmm. commissioners in the um, Atlanta metro area have asked, and I tell them, I don't know, I need to come and sit in on that meeting with you all so that you all will right. say the right things. <laughs> right. Because right. right. we're not losing our <laughs> Right. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> we're not, right. Me and you both are no. <laughs> Can't take anybody. <laughs> right. But secondly, secondly, I think, I think it's very important that people understand that when we um, first started in these positions, there was absolutely no money allocated for cybersecurity and technology services and things that we've done to put in place. So as we are getting ready to go into budget season um, and we're looking at ways, people often want to know how, you know, why do you, do we need an increase in our taxes for numerous things? This is one of the big reasons why we, um, we, or a big reason why there's an increase in in our um, 
needs because we are dealing with cybersecurity technology services. Um, I remember the former clerk of court having a big problem with with the jury, the jury selection because we didn't have adequate security or um, adequate um, things in place for technology for the jury pool. So those are things that we have to look at that we might not necessarily talk about right. on a regular basis. We just know that it needs to happen and we get it done. But understand that taxpayers still, um, that's part of what you pay for when you pay your taxes. You're absolutely right, Commissioner. As the community, the county continues to grow. Uh, needs and services continue to grow. Uh, the more schools they build, the more policemen, more firefighters we're going to need, more improvements to our road, uh, the more bolstering up of our local library system that we're going to need. Absolutely. As the community grows, services uh, become more on demand. And we live in a world that people live life on demand. They, want, they can touch an app and somebody almost uh, appears. It reminds me of Star Trek and beaming up Scotty. It's just, that's where people are now. Uh, uh, and they get a little upset when you can't deliver just that quick at a snap of a finger. So you're absolutely right. Our goal is to be the best stewards of the taxpayers' money and to make sure that we educate and inform our citizenry as to why we're doing what we're doing. Because I, I do get it. You know, I, I, it, it's clear. People want to see where the money is going. Yeah. And it's our part of our uh, duty to make sure we explain that and put it on display. Uh, we, more citizens, you need another fire truck. More citizens, you need 10 more police cars. It's just part of it. So um, that's, you know. Uh, at this point, I want to move now, uh, Commissioner, to public comment. So and I have not opportunity. received any public comment cards. Did you have any? All right. Okay. Well, no public comment at this point. No one's coming forward. All right. Uh, we'll go back to board comment and, and, and wrap up there. Um, of course, number one, um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Thank you for everybody that's come and participated. We have Ms. Geller out here who got, she understood the assignment, as the children <laughs> say, and came in her pink. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. And the, um, our clerk of court is out here, up here dressed in her pink. Also, she does so much for breast cancer, but all of the um, staff look great in their um, breast cancer awareness um, garment. Thank you so much to Roger Holmes for making sure that I was great this morning <laughs> with my almost wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> we took care of it. Um, but yeah, all jokes aside, um, those of us who have people that have um, fallen at the helm of breast cancer and those of us who love on the people who are breast cancer survivors. Mm -hmm. This is um, very serious. Um, get your mammograms. I think next year I'm, I'm going to do something a little different. I'll roll it out like in September, but I think I'm going to do, uh, do take the next, go to the next level on breast cancer okay. awareness All for right. next year. Okay. Um, then of course this is domestic violence awareness month. And as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking we had a, a local attorney, um, this past week who um, was running away from her boyfriend and he ended up shooting her and killing her oh, at man. their apartment complex. Oh. And so, of course, the legal community in oh. Atlanta, I'm tearing up, is, um, you know, it, it seems as if we can't say it enough, look for the warning signs, get out, uh, love yourself enough to leave, but whenever um, domestic violence happens, it takes a toll on all of us. She had a child um, and so now we her family has to go on and clearly a domestic violence incident so um, we're keeping that family uplifted in prayer domestic violence is real love yourself enough to leave any situation where you feel emotionally abused physical physical definitely physically abused financially abused there's so much that goes into um, the whole realm of domestic violence so um, you know you could do bad by yourself and stay alive or unhurt doing it. You just don't need that extra side. Um, finally, on a good note, I had a ball, if nothing else, at our final summer concert series. <laughs> <laughs> I hope there were no pictures. <laughs> because, um, <laughs> oh. But I think we all had a good time. Please don't do it. 
I forgot <laughs> where I was. <laughs> but we had a good time. So many people, commissioners, are we going to do, keep doing this? Um, well, hopefully the budget will allow for things like that. But, you know, like I said, we're going into budget season and we're having to make some very, very tough decisions based on the fact that we did take the rollback rate um, this year. So all of that goes over into next year and people have to understand that when we make a decision, um, it not only affects what happens in 2021, but mm -hmm. it also affects what happens in 2022. Absolutely. So we're going, um, we have to, people love those kinds of things, but I don't think people, when they enter the, into that park for free, don't realize that even though that's a free concert, is not a free concert. We have to pay for the, we have fire and rescue running with their bikes and their uniforms. We have Parks and Rec doing an outstanding job with taking people up and down in those um, golf, cart. golf carts mm -hmm. and coordinating the entire thing. You got to pay the, the, the talent who is absolutely fantastic. But even though it's a, a concert that's free to the public it is not a free concert and we still have to pay for those things and i think that we have to often remind people every day that you know these are services that you get because of of the taxes you pay and it's it's and, and when we go into budget season we have to make the decisions or if what are we going to trade off for a good time like we've had all summer right but i think i i think Sunday was my favorite <laughs> one. Um, uh, that being said, um, I think those are all the comments I have. Well, I'm going to pick up where you left off, okay. Commissioner, and I have to agree with you that uh, this entire summer concert series um, from July all the way to October was just fantastic. And the first group I want to give a hats off and a round of applause is to Parks and Recreation. Let's yeah. do that now. Our Parks and Recreation Department led the way with the support of Fire and Rescue and the Sheriff's Office and many other uh, components that make up Rockdale County government, but they were truly the star of the show, as I like to say, in terms of pulling this event off. The citizens were happy. They enjoyed the last Sunday of each month. You're talking about well-organized. We had a number of senior citizens to come out, and the, I'm so proud of the decision to purchase those uh, big golf carts mm -hmm. that you can put, because there were, there were senior citizens who needed that assistance. They could not walk from that parking lot down to the site. Especially, that was a big plus. Especially after they finished doing the electric slide. Especially after they got through <laughs> doing the electric slide. But again, thanks to Parks and Recreation. And now I'm going to really shift just a little bit to highlight one of Rockdale County's finest, Mr. Corey Brown, who is the head of our community improvement team. Uh, in addition to him being a Rockdale County employee, he has the Corey Brown TCB band who did an awesome okay. job on Sunday. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> I've never been so proud to call um, a performer uh, who happens to be an employee, an employee of Rockdale County. I'm telling you, Mr. Brown and his team, his band did a fantastic awesome. job. Um, we broke a couple of rules by going 30 minutes over, <laughs> and the people were pleased with that. Uh, folks were out of their seats and, and really enjoying and having a great time. And Commissioner Washington is so right that uh, several folks was asking, can we do it again next month? And we had to explain to them the budget is over for this year. We hope we'll be in a position next year to do it again. And then so many other ideas. Even Madam Clerk had a couple of ideas about what we can do next year. And I asked that she would send me an email. We're going to talk about that in our executive leadership team and see how we can find a way to make these things. People like coming together. I think because of the pandemic, one of the reasons, just one of the reasons people have been tired of being cooped up and sheltered in place, but this really gave them an outlet, uh, a part of this summer concert series. So 
We look forward to seeing all of you all next year again as we uh, um, hopefully the budget will allow for us to bring it back to the citizens of Rockdale County next year. Also want to uh, say a big uh, congratulations to all of the rockin' women of Rockdale mm -hmm. County. Uh, on last Saturday, uh, we recognized 10 women uh, in Rockdale County, 10 Rockdale County uh, business owners slash residents were recipients of the rockin' women of Rockdale County. We had a, a slew of nominees. Only 10 women this particular year were actual recipients, but to all of those, even those women who were nominated to, to uh, as a rockin' woman here in Rockdale County, that's a big deal. We had a wonderful brunch. Our very own uh, executive fire chief, Chief uh, McDaniel, was the keynote speaker. She did a fantastic job. And we also had a charge to our women coming from Chief Magistrate Judge Finger 10. And we had also had music from Coy Brown and the TCB band. So it was, and the, the local resident, let me just tell you, we really try to pride ourselves with using local talent. Mm -hmm. um, um, the catering service, Gaslyn Jones is a local resident. We've used her several times. Her food is always good. <laughs> she did a great job. That breakfast was fabulous. But making sure that we practice, Madam Clerk, what we preach by using local people in Rock the County. Ms. Gellert, putting that money back into the county, it was a plus. She's a woman. It was all fitting to have her out there. Uh, thanks to um, our public relations department for both Rockin' Women, as well as the Summer Concert Series. I tell people all the time, you want to know what's going on in Rockdale County? You go to our website. You go to our Twitter or Facebook or our Instagram. We have really given, uh, PR has taken on a, a B12 shot in terms of making sure people know what's going on. We, we've got PR on steroids now because <laughs> people can't say, I can't find you. I don't know where you're looking because it's definitely out there. So uh, thank you to all of those folks. As we hasten to uh, a wrap up for this year, I do want to uh, remind folks of this, and I try to remember to do this every year. We're coming up to uh, the time of the year that people need to be a little extra alert, okay? Uh, as we move through this week and young people and groups and churches and we'll be celebrating um, Halloween and, and, and groups celebrating a trick or trunk, trunk or treat or whatever they call it. Uh, I know the churches don't do Halloween, but they have some type of event, uh, kind of an Oktoberfest for a lot of the young people. We want to be uh, uh, remind all of our parents and our citizens to be careful, be mindful. We're still in the midst of a pandemic. Let's not forget that. The pandemic is still happening. People are still being impacted by COVID. Uh, we have our final clergy call with all of our local clergy on the 18th of November that's coming up where we've been in touch with all of our clergy all throughout the year, every quarter, to let them know what's the status and what's happening here in Rockdale as relate to, to COVID-19. And I mentioned to Executive Director Holmes this morning about sending out a message through our talent management department to all of our employees that, guess what? Believe it or not, we're still in a pandemic. So you have to be mindful and do those things to safeguard and be uh, cautious uh, against um, um, the wrong type of interaction or activity. And let me just say this, uh, don't let your guard down. Uh, I heard someone last week say, well, even when the pandemic is over, whenever it's over, I'm still going to keep six where, feet distance where, away from I was folks. Gonna wear my mask. <laughs> no, nobody <laughs> wants you talking in their face right. like that ever again because you just don't know. Uh, so, so many great things are happening. We're coming up on the 13th uh, Turkey Drive giveaway for our senior citizens. And let me slow it down again to say that. There is a shortage of turkeys, um, and I, I believe, Commissioner Washington, if ever there was a year that the seniors needed this support, this year because so many people have suffered financially throughout this pandemic, we're asking anyone that hears this broadcast or watch this broadcast, please, ma'am, please, sir, if you can afford to pick up an extra turkey, the turkey is the most expensive part of most of those Thanksgiving meals, and I always have to point out, uh, there are senior citizens who are on a fixed income, and a lot of them, 
for whatever reasons, they are stuck raising grandchildren. So it makes a big difference on Thanksgiving Day at that dinner table uh, for them to be able to afford uh, the kind of meal that all of us have been blessed with. So uh, we're already taking donations. The freezer is on the floor over at Courtesy Ford, 1636 uh, Dogwood Drive. You can take your turkey and drop it off over there. However many turkeys you can rally up and find, we ask that you donate them. And then on the 14th of November, Sunday the 14th, we're actually going to give all of those um, turkeys out to those uh, seniors who were in need. This is the 13th year we've done this. They're gonna be out there in record number. We normally give out 400 to 600 turkeys every year. We need turkeys, so make sure you hear me uh, say this. This is almost a plea to you that we need your support and need your help. Uh, one of the safe things, we were able to do it with the Linda Ham back in March. Seniors don't have to come into the building. They don't have to get out of the car. We've got a drive-through setup where they come, Pop the trunk, we place the turkey in the trunk, or perhaps on the back better. seat. That's yeah. a whole lot better. Yeah. And that way no one is contaminated and what have you and come in contact. And it, it's a really set up. I'm not sure that we're going to go back to the other one. I, like after, that. I think the drive through just works, better just keeps it moving. Yeah. Uh, and usually in about an hour, 400 turkeys have already been distributed. We do back. encourage our seniors to get there on time, mm -hmm. uh, on time, <laughs> because, because we handed out all those turkeys last year, I think, well, it was early this year with Linda Ham, mm -hmm. we handed out all, I think, 400 hams, Chief Cape, and about 4.30, we did it in an hour, and about 4.30, people were still showing up, we were out of ham, so it is a first come, first serve type event. Thank you to Chief Mack, uh, and the fire department continue to be uh, our primary support along with Courtesy Forward uh, with uh, making sure that we have the freezers available to house those turkeys and that the fire department can transfer them from Courtesy Parkway over to the Olivia Haydale. Uh, it kind of goes back to something Commissioner Washington said, all this stuff just don't happen. There's a lot going on behind the scenes to make all these things happen. But my last plea is that if you're able to uh, donate a turkey and you can uh, find it in, within your financial means to pick up an additional turkey, I'm telling you, there's ever been a year that will make a difference. And, and remember this, it's a blessing to be a blessing. Right. Okay? Can I, can I, um, Go ahead, Commissioner. I, two things. Forgot to announce that we are doing our vaccination clinic and with the incentive. Um, the Board of Commissioners has decided to offer a $50 incentive for Rockdale County residents who are receiving their first shots. That um, initiative will take place on Saturday, November the 6th from 9 to 5 at the Health Department over next to um, J.P. Carr, okay. I, I think it's 901 Taylor Street or something similar. Mm -hmm. I know most people know where the Health Department is. Um, you will have to have your ID to show that you are a Rockdale County resident in order to receive the $50 gift um, card sent giveaway even though the um, all of the organizations are not listed on this flyer we do have several community organizations that wanted to help um, with this initiative to volunteer to make sure that they get the the word out to do the posting on social media we really want to um, incentivize people incentivize people to come out and um, get vaccinated we are at a 44 percent um, was it fifty? Was that fifty-five percent um, vaccination rate? But that means forty-four percent of our um, residents are not vaccinated. Mm. So we want to get uh, we we want to get. The, I want a hundred percent, but I'm an overachiever. So we, <laughs> we but <laughs> November the sixth at um, what was it nine eighty-five Taylor Street. Um, November the 6th from 9 a.m. to says 4 p.m. So we'll be there until 5, but the last shot will be at uh, 4 o'clock p.m. Um, also, we are doing the um, second Tuesday of every month, um, the Small Business um, Initiative at the Reserve. Um, we will, um, this, this month, we are collecting new and gently used um, luggage for children mm -hmm. that are in DFAT's custody because often they have to leave with their and put their things in trash bags. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking it would be nice to have a 
a piece of luggage or mm. a duffel bag or something like that for these children. So if you come to the initiative, I mean to the mixer, then you can bring your duffel bag. Now, chair. I don't want you to bring me the, the luggage that you went to college with. <laughs> <laughs> That's not gently used. How do you know I still have that? <laughs> I know you. <laughs> That's not the gently used we're referring to. <laughs> no, but, but, but I really like that um, initiative there because uh, when you talk about um, the young people that's part of the DFAC system of foster care having to move from place to place, place, to place. And, and then placing their personal artifacts into a trash bag or a Walmart bag, that's, it's embarrassing, it's not a good look. There's already a issue of stability and right, self-esteem exactly. going on. Last thing you need is to have your stuff all exposed or look like you, you're in a mess when you are really going through some challenging times. So I, I think that's a great initiative, and I think the more you communicate that out to the right. public, people will, and this is the time of year that people really rally behind those types of initiatives uh, to help out. That was a good one there, Commissioner. Okay. And so if you are not going to, cannot make it to the um, mixer. mixer, then you can drop it off at the admin building. I'm sure I can, I'll get it by then. But please, um, if you have new or gently used luggage then <laughs> we bring it um, for our children in defense custody right. that is all I have I'm uh, director executive director Holmes do you have any announcements from talent management or anything that you want to add regarding our pink out day before we close out here we want to make sure we don't uh, overlook what we're doing here although we've talked about it I just want to it, it was initiated out of your department Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Commissioner. Madam Commissioner, as well as Chairman. So yes, thank you. Um, we did invite the entire county, all of Rockdale County employees to join us today in our pink out day. The Sheriff's Office, they have been wearing their pink badges. The fire department has um, different pink shirts as well. So we are excited that everybody participated and just looking forward to a wonderful acknowledgement of how important today is. So thank you again for that opportunity. Thank you, Director. Thank you so much. Uh, Director Mark Lewis, our Executive Director and CFO for Rockdale County. Director Lewis, is there anything that you'd like to say publicly coming out of the Finance Department before we wrap up this meeting this morning? The one thing about Rockdale County Directors, they're always ready. <laughs> Uh, the one thing I would like to say publicly, uh, we have our new deputy director on board within finance, yes. Narendra Bhattawaj. Uh, he comes to us with a great deal of experience in public sector, uh, directly coming from Macon Bibb County. Okay. Um, uh, he has his CPA and his MBA, but we are extremely excited to have him join super. our team here in finance. We're super, super excited. excited. Super, super excited. excited. Super. Let's show him and give him a round of applause. Welcome aboard. Yes, sir. Welcome aboard. Yes, sir. Would you, uh, Mr. Deputy Director, would you like to have a couple of words to say this morning? It's up to you. <laughs> All right. You got to come to me. <laughs> I'm very excited to work with the Rockdale County. I came from Macon Bay County and worked there for 17 years. And my expertise and my experience certainly will help the Rockdale County. Well, thank you thank for you. selecting and choosing Rockdale County as a place to work. I do want to let you know this, if no one has told you already, you've chosen the best county in the entire <laughs> oh, <yeah>. state. <laughs> yeah, so give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to working with you. And thank you, Director Lewis. Director Morgan, anything out of EMA that we need to be made aware of that uh, you think that is pressing enough to uh, take advantage of these few moments we have left in this meeting? Just real quickly, I'd like to echo the Commissioner's comments on vaccination. She is absolutely correct. We have 56% who are fully vaccinated. That leaves 44% that we still need to get and talk about to get rid of this pandemic. So get your vaccination. Anybody has any problems finding one, give me a call at EMA. We will find some, whether it's Walgreens or one of our clinics or GNR. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Uh, Director Morgan, before you leave, uh, come on back up. I, 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 I had uh, uh, what is called an Oz mail. I had an Oz mail hit me. And I, I just got a, a, a question for you. Uh, and I think 
the rest of the folks listening might have the same question. So give me a minute and get this out. Bear with me, Commissioner. I, the question is, uh, as much as we were highlighting breast cancer awareness, what brought it on to you to go ahead and change your hair to be a part of this whole awareness? Just, we want to hear straight. I don't want to ask anybody in your department. I don't want to call Susan and ask her. I want to ask you, can you share with us your thoughts, sir? I may have read the memo a little too literally uh, about, being, <laughs> about being pink out. Um, I will say that um, I will let you know tomorrow if this stuff doesn't wash out, <laughs> what my commitment is going to be. Thank you. Give him another round of applause. <laughs> I will tell you, uh, Director Gum is not the most enthusiastic director we have. Director Morgan is standing right next to him. <laughs> so it, we certainly do appreciate you going the extra mile. Uh, to celebrate breast cancer awareness. Director Rutledge, is there any need for executive session? No, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Happy Tuesday. Be careful as you move forward. This meeting is adjourned.